the sort of thing where uh, your presentation at um, Pecha Kucha, Yeah. That whole creative process of just being aware of your surroundings yeah. and stuff like that. Um, yeah. How did you come about it? How did you discover it? Uh, I started consciously looking and finding things in the elementary school schoolyard. There was a section of it that was uh, a parking lot that w wasn't used anymore. And I would just kind of do the perimeter and look around and see if there's any little bits and baubles of plastic or metal or something that I took with me or collected, found things. So um, all throughout my adolescence and, and my childhood, I was just scouring, you know, my natural environment, the streets, the parks, whatever, for things that caught my eye, uh, little things. Uh, as a mid-teen, I turned these things into weird, urban, post-apocalyptic hippie jewelry. Uh, and actually, right into my early 20s, I must admit. Uh, and little clusters, also what was of, of a big influence is that this back room where we're sitting right now was my father's workshop uh, when he was in the shop. And there was a comparable one in my home growing up. So where all his drawers of uh, bits of bolts and screws and nails and hardware and tools and whatnot were functional to him, even in organized in his own way, uh, I kind of ritualized that. I ritualized the bunch of weird little mysterious things in a bottle. And uh, so I was collecting things and mimicking my father to a certain degree, but pure magic, you know, not utilitarian. Uh, so there was that that happened early on. That continued, and it continued as I was a um, young man feeling myself being constantly initiated into the mysteries of a greater world. I was very um, uh, keyed into uh, kind of consciousness games. I was reading a lot about spirituality and mysticism and history of religion and uh, that kind of thing. And that became part of my identity and still is a part of my identity. And I saw the little fragments that one can collect and as well as the little fragments that one can leave behind as a communication, um, almost as a shamanic practice of what is the world offering? What does the world show me? Um, what do I take with me? What do I leave behind for somebody else to discover? What do I add? You know, um, like graffiti or street art uh, that I've dabbled in, um, it's a communication and I've always enjoyed that. Um, so I, I built up these, these philosophies around that. Uh, how does an urban witchy character leave their mark? Um, so I've always been very interested in, interested in if I see a symbol on the wall, does that affect me? Will that um, gladden my day? Just like we could see something offensive and it'd get us down, well, we can also see something uplifting and it'll uplift us. We can also seed the urban landscape with uh, uplifting messages in the vain hope that uh, the humans might shake the mud off and say, wow, we're on a planet. Let's, uh, let's get it together. Let's have a party or let's, uh, let's break down these borders, this kind of thing. Um, Basically combining the art, the store, and your collecting, how did... Right. Uh, based based on your presentation at, uh, at, at Pecha Kucha. Well, and, and Pe what, what I decided, uh, I was very thrilled to be invited to Pecha Kucha because um, it, I like public speaking, I like presenting myself and my art. Um, I decided for that presentation to present found paper and how it can help an artist, uh, how these accidental textures and images could help an artist uh, be inspired. Um, 
so that we don't have to rely on the blank canvas uh, or the blank sheet of paper. We could see these accidental textures um, and, and be informed by them uh, and not to dismiss them and not to dismiss things that, that humans and nature have collaborated upon, like a weathered garage sale poster or something like this. Um, because sometimes intentionality can't reproduce that. Like it would take a high level of craftsmanship to reproduce uh, consistently whether garage sale posters, right? You have to figure out how to do this, or you can just harvest them. They're on the telephone poles, they're expired, you can take them down, it's okay. Um, so I am interested in a high level of craftsmanship, but I know that I have not devoted the hours to it. I've devoted the hours to something else. And that's this something else is seeing and uh, recognizing what I see um, and seeing where it fits into my own mythologies um, and and which trajectory of my art practice it is most in line with. Um, so I love found paper. Uh, it's easier to store than let's say found chairs, you know, broken chairs. A scrap piece of paper, it's okay, you can put it in a shoebox, and uh, you get 500 of them in a shoebox, it's fantastic. So um, I presented that to Pecha Kucha because uh, they, it tends to be a, a forum for designers and architects, and uh, a huge part of me is thoroughly disgusted with design and architecture because of its um, blatant anti-body stance, uh, where things are not particularly organic in a time when we're screaming for more organicity, uh, something that works very well in harmony with the body and the land around us. We still have um, people in design that are uh, enslaved by clean white spaces, angular spaces, so I wanted to kind of have a little bit of an anecdote to that, antidote to that. Uh, like, I'm a very firm supporter of like, you know, moratorium on chair design. Chairs have been designed. Next, you know, can we grow houses now? Let's work on growing houses. Let's work on cleaning spaces. She talked uh, to Anna Rewakowitz. No, oh, uh, gladly. Mm -hmm. she, she blows up houses. Not in exploding, as in... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... As long as there's no plastics or spacious polymers involved, I'm, I'm cool with it. Lots of plastics. Yeah, well, there we go. Um, moratorium on the use of plastics in design. Um, unless the plastic already exists. Now then. Uh, now there, it's a certain thing. Uh, but first of all, it's... Um, remember when Putters was uh, down just below Mount Royal? This was probably... 90... They moved out probably about 98 or so. Oh, I don't know what putters is. Putters to the pickle people. Hmm. Yeah, there was somebody had organized a art exhibit of storefronts hmm. on Saint Laurent. Oh, vague, yes. And it is one guy where what he had done was walked up and down Saint Laurent from river to river. Wow. Picked up the bottle caps, picked up the oh, bus yeah. transfers. Yeah, yeah and then put them up in a way so that you could then, he had the map of the street and he said, okay, these came from here, here, yes. here, here, here. Yes, I remember that. I was very, very happy to see that he finally got around to putting it up on uh, the internet. Oh, great. Yes. Okay. And it's not a well thought out internet representation, but it's still very nice. And it yes. says, uh, uh, which one them? Memorabilia of a lost, uh, of a past exhibit. It's very nice because I was fascinated by that window. That was Brilliantly done. Yeah, uh, any kind of urban ar uh, archaeology uh, or personal history, and uh, I, I love that stuff. And the people that are able to, to map it, fantastic. My mapping is very loosey goosey, um, but I always appreciate. It. I always appreciate the detritus. Like this, these are the things that are around us. These are jewels, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it's garbage, literally, but that's fine. You know, we could we could recontextualize it, and um, but we don't have to recontextualize it in. Um, in a pristine museum space. We could do it in anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very pleased. I discovered a tool last night where I can take a spreadsheet, yeah. make it so it turns into a Google map. Oh, okay. Which is very cool. Two steps. 
And so it is this sort of thing where now suddenly, oh, got this here, got this here, oh. got this here. That's interesting. Cool. Uh -huh. Ten minutes later, you have it as a blueprint. Cool, cool. And that's one thing. Is, is there are some of the, those projects that are presented at, at Pecha Kucha, which are very inspiring. These uh, where uh, sound artists and, ar and, and architects work together to create environments or, or create city parks or temporary parks and wonderful stuff. I want to see more of that, of course. Um, uh, but this found paper as inspiration... Um, it's kind of like it's interesting how some of it gets in my collecting some of the found paper gets immediately put into my art piles mm -hmm. and okay. some of it gets put into I could sell this okay. excuse me <laughs> no problem